in this series. Just die. First, I needed to get to the South Island. Well, I've made it to New Zealand. It was the plan, it just things came together a little quicker than I thought and I had to scramble so I haven't planned a lot, but like Australia, I'll just go roaming New Zealand. Mainly going to head to the South Island, but I flew to the North Island through Auckland to get hold of the bike. I was looking at shipping my bike and then renting, but I reached out to Royal Enfield actually to find out if they knew anybody who rented them, and they said they actually had one I could borrow, which was very nice of them. <laughs> Made life a lot easier. So that's how the scramble came about, not pun intended. Scrambled, got everything together, and I'm riding a Scram Himalaya 411. The bike was actually located a couple hours south east coast at Tarunga. Ta no, ta I'm going to butcher just about every name in New Zealand. I'm very sorry. I'll put maps up and names. But I have plenty. So I know how to say that. When I picked up the bike, I needed to make a few adjustments. Critically, adding a back plate so I had somewhere to mount the top bag. To get all my gear there, I'd put all my bags into one duffel bag with a total weight, including the bags, of 22.3 kilos. So I was travelling a lot lighter this time. I strapped the soft panniers on and the top bag. So I've got everything on the bike. I'll do a uh, few stops along the way just to make sure I've tightened everything up enough. We'll see how we go. headed off south from Tauranga. I was soon out of the city limits, then travelling along the coastline. And that's how I ended up at the beach. I'm heading towards Gisborne because the bike is actually pretty new and it needs its 5,500 kilometre service. So that's the first plan. I've just stopped over the beach to have a quick look and we'll keep continuing on south, south. As the bike service was booked in for tomorrow, and the bike needed to have around 500 kilometers on the taco, I decided to go around the coastline rather than cutting straight across to Gisborne, as this would give me the mileage I needed. And as a bonus, I'd get to look around this part of the North Island. It is 
pretty. What a really cool coastal road this is. I think it goes like this all most of the way around the peninsula. So I'm actually racing the light a bit. Don't like doing it, but I am to try and find a, a free camp spot which is just on the far tip of the peninsula. So I won't stop too many times, but I had to stop at least once. rode along the southeast coast of the Bay of Plenty towards Cape Runaway. The road wound its way along, hugging the shore, then making its way into the thick vegetation, and again back along the coastline. Seems they like really large hedges here. I gather it's for wind protection, but luckily today there wasn't much about. A quick search of Wikicamp New Zealand showed there was this spot you could free camp at, a place called Lotton Point. As it was the only place it seemed you could free camp, that would have to be the spot I'd camp tonight. That's a big fella. I came over the crest to see a stunning little bay. I dropped down onto a dirt track, then past a pig farm. Good start, New Zealand. How good's this camping spot? <laughs> turning it on. Good pick by me, random, just dumb luck, but I'll take it, it's stunning. Gonna get the camp set up before it gets dark. Now to start the evening ritual of setting up the tent again. Camp set up just before the last of the light's gone, so got there in time. Like I didn't stop too many times on the way in, although I was tempted. A little trash from <laughs> travelling all day. Everything's sorted though. So we've got a bike, it's functioning. Still have to work out the uh, getting power to my navigation. Hopefully tomorrow when I get this bike serviced they might be able to help me if I push my luck. Hopefully it's not too bad. So I'm just gonna pass out basically. There is some new stuff I've brought on this trip. Not a lot. My nice jacket I've got on. Because we're in New Zealand, it's a lot colder. Same with my sleeping bag. Just the only changes about because it's colder. And of course the bike. There's nothing better than good soft grass when camping. I went to sleep with the sound of the water lapping the black sand beach. Morning. Got up just for the sun. And it's just hitting the clouds. Got to pack up the tent and head off. Seems a bit of a shame not to get to explore this campsite, but Hopefully there's many more just as good in New Zealand. Plan today is to get to Gisborne, then I can head towards the ferry and get on to the South Island. made my way out of the bay, past the pig farm and up the hill. Once out onto the main road I continued around the coastline towards Gisborne. The 
area had been hit by a major storm system in the recent past, and it seemed they were still dealing with the after effects, with a lot of road repairs still being done. With a smallish population of just over 5 million in New Zealand, there isn't an abundance of resources and people when you get a major disaster. So, things take a little longer. This is a temporary bridge while they repair the damage. That's one way to get the message across. Now that's a lot of sheep. New Zealand living up to its reputation. Well there's some great free camping spots right on the edge of the beach. You couldn't complain about waking up to views like that. made it to Gisborne. Luckily, the Royal Enfield dealer was on the main street, so not hard to find. While they were doing service, there was something I needed to grab, as I couldn't find mine in the rush to pack. It wouldn't be great without a set of these if it got cold, and being the South Island of New Zealand, it's probably gonna get cold. With the bike service done, I got back on the road heading south. I passed a few wineries, over some rivers, then the terrain started getting a little more bumpy. Well, with the reputation of having a fair bit of wet weather, it was only going to be a matter of time before I ran into some. Hopefully I get lucky on this trip and don't get a lot of them. Now, I had a bit of luck when I landed. A couple, Rowan and Penny, who had watched the series where I travelled around Tasmania as research for their own trip around Tasmania, they had sent a message to say thanks and said if I was ever in New Zealand and needed anything to reach out. I let them know I probably would be coming through their area of Forks Bay. It so happened that coincidentally they were travelling from Auckland through Tauranga at the same time I needed to. So they gave me a lift from Auckland to where I needed to pick up the bike. They also said that there was a spare bed in Hawke's Bay if I needed. As it was basically where I needed to stop for the night, I took them up on their offer. It has been amazing the help and generosity I've received while doing these long motorbike journeys. I left Hawke's Bay just after the sun had risen. And well, let's just say it was brisker than I thought it would be. Morning, just pulled off the road here before I hit, I think it's a major highway. Hands were starting to get a bit cold. It is a chilly morning. So the plan is to get to Wellington, because that's where, Wellington? Yes, Wellington. That's where the ferry leaves to get to the South Island. There might be a dirt track I can do if I get there early enough. So that's why I've started pretty early. A few things still sorting out on the bike. I still have to get a front tube. And the biggest issue's been this side pannier touching the exhaust. I picked the wrong side. Oh well. They only sell toilet paper in four packs. Probably a bit much, but better than going without. Love. I might keep that on top. So that's all sorted. Back on the road. What the? Mitre 10 is orange here? In Australia, its colour is blue. It's like a parallel universe where things seem they're the same, but there are a few glitches in the matrix. I have noticed there is a bit of a car resto culture here. The first sighting of some taller mountains.
I wound my way through some hills with wind turbines on top. It's about as close as I've ever been to the blades. Normally they are so much higher up. I got onto the main highway south as I made my way down to Wellington. I dropped down into the city. I rode along the bay, past where the ferry terminal was, to the South Island. As I had plenty of daylight left, I headed just the other side of the city to where there was a trail I found on Wiki Lock. Well, that's disappointing. It didn't look bone dry, but apparently dry enough to be a concern. Hopefully this wouldn't be an issue for the trails on the South Island. There were actually a lot of places you could free camp in the city. Well, when they say camp, they mean stay in your car, van or RV, but not tent camping, as you need to be self-contained, meaning you need to have some form of toilet a little hard to carry on a motorbike. So the search was on to find somewhere I could pitch the tent. The closest place I found was a dock camping area, Department of Conservation, about 30 minutes from the ferry. Well, after a bit of searching, I finally found a camp spot. So I'm gonna set up first and then work out times and everything to get to that ferry tomorrow. That was an interesting day. Seeing that track was closed, I thought I might be able to free camp on it, but it's closed so I couldn't even get on it. This was the only other place within oh, half an hour, 45 minutes of town to get back to the ferry. That's the big issue, I've got to get there about 7.30 in the morning. So I got here, all good, went to pay, but they've got no envelopes, so I've just stuck my name and rego onto a $10 note. Hopefully that works. At least I gave it a crack. Then the other issue is, when I looked on Wikicamps to this place, it said the gate closes, but it opens at 6am and closes at 8pm during summer. And then I got to where the board is to pay and all that, and it said it opens at 8am, which means I wouldn't be able to get out. But I did look, went around the first gate I can get through the walkway, the second gate I can. There is a third gate. Doesn't look like it's used, but if they close that, I'd be pretty stuffed. So then I had to scout around a bit. I think if I go through the bush, I can drop into a just a runoff water gully next to the road and then go along that and I should be able to pop out at the end. I hope it doesn't come to that, but <laughs> I've, I've got a plan B. Hopefully. So I did bring my own USB port. I ripped it off my Himalayan <laughs> and then gave it to the guys at Gisborne. They just put two more wires on attached. They did hardwire it. So I've got to remember to disconnect it every time I well stop the bike from any period. Yeah, I just can't leave it on or I'll flatten the battery. So that's about the only other adjustment I needed. Other than that, the bike itself, so it's Graham since I've ridden it for a couple of days now, on the road, it's great having a smaller front wheel the 19 on road is really good you can just it's just yeah turn side to side a lot easier than the big laggy 21 with the knobblies on but my question will be what will it be like on the dirt or a bit gnarlier terrain if we come across anything a bit rocky a bit you know we'll see if that makes a difference if i'm wishing i had a 21 inch so tomorrow is the ferry, it's about three and a half hours on to finally the South Island of New Zealand where all the big mountains are and the tracks and all that. There's stuff here but it's apparently that's, that's the go. In the next episode, I cross the Cook Strait to get to the South Island and finally get onto my first dirt track.